Welcome to this another player guide on the state of play in Star Citizen. Now, of course, if you're coming from my last video all about capacitors, ship weapons and more, then this one's going to be really helpful because I'm going to go into the key bindings that affect all of that and then a lot more. And, of course, we're also going to go into best ways to optimize the game for better performance. So if you're struggling with FPS, especially around Horizon, then maybe this video can help you as well. This is relevant to patch 3.14 and, and onwards. Of course, if 3.13 is still live by the time this comes out, then it's probably still going to be relevant for that. But if something drastic changes in the future, then I shall make an updated video to go over the sort of things that change then, just like I did with 3.14. Now, there's a lot to go into, so let's just start off right away, shall we? As you can see, Star Citizen's menus aren't the most attractive in the world. But what they are is jam-packed full of toggle switches and customization options that really can change the way you play. Now, I'm not going to go through every single thing in every single menu. I'm going to go through all of the menus, but only tell you about the key things that I think are most important. At the end of the day, if you made it here to this video, I'm pretty sure you can read. And I'm more confident in you being able to do this on your own than I am in SIG releasing the game in the next century. And of course, it goes without saying that these options are for me and my playstyle. Not everything I say or do might work for you. But if you'd really like a head start and you do think your setup is just that similar to mine, then if you contact me through the Discord, I'll give you access to my attribute files and my user files and all those sort of things that will allow you to just copy and paste them into your user folder and kick off exactly where you see here on screen. So the first section, the game settings section, has a lot of things to do with subtitles, game interaction, things like toggle sprint, toggle lean, uh, prone toggle, all those sort of things you'd expect in other games that are especially FPS focused. However, what you also find in here are toggle switches for your flight mode as well. Whether you want G-safe toggled on, whether you want your speed limiter to toggle on when you first get into your pilot seat. All of this is the sort of thing that you might discover as you play more. But this is where they are. You've also got the most important, your enhanced stick precision zone and dampening zone. Set them manually to your preferred liking, but this is just how ESP, your ship, and also auto gimbal lock on and attract to targets. How sticky you want your crosshair to be as you get closer and closer to that pip. That's the best way of explaining it, really. The rest of the settings, of course, are all personal. You go through them as and how you wish. You can do the same as you do for your ship, as you do for turrets. So you can try and copy them across. It's not that hard. It is also automatic. So bear that in mind. And now we move on to arguably one of the most important pages of all, the graphic settings. In here, you can mess around with gamma, brightness and contrast, almost like any other game. Set them however you prefer. Mine is set like this because that's what works best on my monitor. Obviously below that, you've got resolution. But just below that, you've got windowed mode. Now, if you're running into any compatibility issues or crashes, First of all, try just running it in borderless. I've never had good experience in full screen, and that's why I run it in borderless. As for the actual quality settings, now this is a very interesting one, and I went and took the liberty of doing a few FPS tests up here on this platform to show you in just a moment. But if you have a good, powerful machine, the higher you set your graphic settings, the more GPU you will utilize. Unfortunately, the game and its rendering sequence is still handled on a single core basis. So if you have a really fast core CPU, I go through some of my specs a little bit later on in the video, then you will see higher frame rates just by default. Now I'm gonna teach you a little trick. To check your FPS in game, just bring up the tilde menu or the command prompt menu. Type R underscore and then hit tab. That'll bring up display info options, then click one. Typing that in brings up a little debug menu on the top right of your screen that will show you your FPS as well as your ping connection to server, as well as your frame hold time. All of this stuff is relevant to you, especially if you want to know how well your game is performing and how good your connection is to the server. As you can see, with everything as high as it will go, I'm only getting about 37 FPS. Of course, that's with 19 gigabytes of dedicated video mem memory and running on a 16 core CPU. If we adjust the settings down to their lowest possible, then you'll immediately see an FPS increase. Even I was surprised, in fact, actually, we went from 30 all the way up to 50 FPS. And you'll soon find out why this is important. Because I also managed to figure out what causes such a massive frame drop. It isn't everything as I'd first suspected. No, 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 no. It's actually just the volumetric cloud settings that are brand new to patch 314 and Orison. So if you adjust everything else back to high, how you like it, and keep those volumetric clouds low, well, you should see a massive boost to performance. And of course, a much better play experience all across the verse. 
And on a brief note of what each thing does, well, quality, of course, is the textures, the texture resolution and the graphical quality settings overall. So how sharp you want something to be and how nice you want it to look. There is no shadow option as of yet, because as we know, shadows have a huge impact normally on game performance. Scattered objects is the scattering of objects along the floor and how far away they render in. Think of this like the sort of trash or rubbish you'd find on ArtCorp or on the floor, or Microtech or anywhere else around the verse. Putting this up high makes the, makes the world feel more alive, but bringing it down low will of course leave you with a smoother and plain experience, but slightly smoother performance. Lastly, you can see terrain tessellation. This is the bump maps, the sort of texturous way the ground or surface of a planet, play space or vehicle might look. The higher your tessellation, the more bump maps, the more vertices there are to render. At least as far as I understand it anyway. It's usually done in the back end of your computer. It is not the overall resolution and polygon count of the asset entirety. It's usually the layers of textures put on top. Overall, on high, I'm happy with how the game looks. I wish the clouds performed better, but as you can see, the toll this has on my system is quite severe, even on the sort of specs I have. Now, I'll preface this information on screen with the following details. This is running in a 30 degree ambient room. It's the UK, it's the middle of July, it's pretty disgusting. My CPU is using Precision Boost Overdrive because single core clock speeds are more important than a base all core clock speed. And my GPU, that's a 3090, is overclocked to 2.1 gigahertz. So, take that with a pinch of salt, and hopefully that should give you a good idea what to expect on your own system. Once you've decided on graphical settings, there are a few things to go through. Motion blur. Some people hate it, some people love it. Because this game to me is more about cinema and visual experiences, I leave it on just for that. VSync, I obviously turn off because this does affect your frame rates, but I have VSync turned on inside of NVIDIA Control Panel, just a matter of fact, because I do run a G-Sync monitor. Sharpening, I recommend setting that to 60. It does slightly decrease performance, but it does improve visual quality a butt ton. And after that, you've got chromatic aberration. Just turn that off as well with film grain. Completely turn those off. Moving on to audio. This is, again, one of those sort of places where you do what you like. If you own great hardware, then make sure you set your dynamic range to full and your speaker type to speakers rather than headphones. Of course, whichever floats your boat, you might find that different settings suit you more and that is completely up to you. The only thing here that really affects your game is the audio driven camera strength shake. Turn that up or down. Again, it can depend on the patch, whether or not this is too aggressive or too low by default, but you can completely remove it if you find it a little bit annoying. Following that comes controls. Although controls actually have more of an impact on your existing key bindings. And that means we'll go into that just after we finished on the last page, comms and head tracking. So comms for you've been head tracking. This is where you control all of the inputs you have, like your microphone or maybe your head tracking device. If you have a Toby eye tracker or a head track IR in here, you'll see loads and loads and loads of parameters. Change them to your liking. Of course, again, like I said, if you need mine, because I run on a 34 inch monitor, you're more than welcome to ask for them. Just make sure you go into the correct head tracking device and you turn it on. For example, Toby or track IR, if you have that plugged in. And then after that, you just set them to your liking. I have aim down sight turned off, but I have it on during my FPS walkabouts. So lastly, and most importantly, let's get on with key binds. The key bind menu will show you, if you are a keyboard and mouse player, everything you need to know by default. So if you have any questions, just refer back to the graphic on screen and it'll have everything you want. It shows you literally every single thing. And if you go into your advanced controls customizations, you'll be able to manually change what your default key bindings are. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the mouse and keyboard key bindings because like I said, it's all written down for you and right in front of your face. So if you have any questions and you want to change things, it literally is as straightforward as changing key bindings in any other game. So instead, I'm going to use the rest of the time available to talk about joystick key bindings because they're a bit more complex and there are some more tips I have for you on ways to improve your already existing button choices and button layouts and how to optimize them efficiently. So on the bottom right, you'll be able to switch through all of your input devices and select joystick slash HOTAS. As you can see, there's an absolute metric butt ton of options and controls. And inside every single subsection, there's even more options. What you're seeing here and what I'm trying to highlight for you is something called left alt modifier. As you can see, I've got a few buttons there that all say left alt plus button whatever. A left alt modifier is a tool that you can use built into the game 
that allows you to assign another key function to an already used and existing key. For example, say you have a very limited amount of button options on your joystick. Say you have two T16,000Ms. Well, you can assign one button on one of your other joysticks as an alt modifier. Just do this through something like Joyter Key, where you assign one button as left alt. And then the game will intuitively use left alt plus any other button to assign a brand new command to that function for an already used up key. Going through the controls list, you'll see pretty much everything that there was for keyboard and mouse. Most of it will be unbound by default. So don't forget to assign your pitch and your, your strafe back and forth, your strafe left and right. Otherwise, you just frankly won't be able to get off the ground. It's important to mention movement because actually throttle forward and back or throttle up is actually referred to sometimes as strafe back and forth in the controls menu. And it can be very important to, once you set your key bindings, go into controls and invert some of your inputs. Because by default, the game doesn't really understand which axis actually is up and down and which axis actually is left and right. A few other controls of note in here would be decoupled mode or ESP. Decoupled being the sort of cruise control function, it'll turn your engines off and let you glide as if you're in zero G because by default, the game likes to input thruster functions. So you sort of fly more like a plane in atmosphere, even though you may be in space. Your ESP is your assisted targeting systems. Turn that off or on, depending on what you like. I definitely like having it on. And of course, you've got cruise control, landing gear, detail, and the rest of it to assign for all the functions your ship has by default. Vehicle power triangle assignment is brand new for 314 and it's in here where you'll be able to adjust your capacitor charge and how much you want for each program, shields, weapons or thrust. You'll remember this, I mentioned it in the last video, but I have them set to tap once for increase and hold for full max power. Of course, another button being assigned to decrease. Just don't forget to assign a reset button because obviously if you do go full and you quickly want to adjust back to a nice even load, you're going to want to have a reset button available. And again, once you're happy with all of your key bindings, once they're all set, go into your controls. Make sure you select the correct input device on the bottom right, whether this be joystick one, two, three, or four, because they all will each be assigned separate numbers. You can go in here, set your saturation, set your dead zones in case you have a dead zone problem on one of your joysticks, or maybe like me, you have an X52 that has a bit of a sticky edge, outer edge that is. So you might want to bring the saturation down, maybe 95%, 90%. You've also got your inversion settings just above that. If you have your throttle for some reason sending backwards when you press forwards, just set it to inverted and you'll be good to go. This is the same for every single input, whether that be up, down, left, right, pitch, your strafe, roll, doesn't matter what, you can invert almost every single one, both in turrets and in flight separately. So that pretty much does it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Of course, controls are what you make of them. They're as intuitive as you allow them to be. I hope you've liked this video. I hope it's been informative. Granted, it's not the most cinematic masterpiece I've ever done. But if you like what you see, then please get in touch and let me know if it helped you, either by commenting down below, subscribing, or even liking the video and sharing it with others. It's always great to help new players and maybe even veterans alike. Oh, by the way, check out these videos on screen. They're actually pretty goddamn fantastic. I've got a lot more videos coming and I've got a lot more action down the pipeline as well. So come check me out live. And until next time, I'll see you then.